So, you're diving in the Atlantic Ocean, and suddenly you realize you haven't seen anyone else around for a while. You come up to the surface, and your boat's gone. No! In the distance, you can see an ocean buoy you can climb onto. You scramble to safety and look out at the open ocean around you. There's nothing but blue in every direction, except something large moving in the water grabs your attention. A dorsal fin breaks to the surface. It's all over! It's a great big shit. Wait a minute. It just rolled onto its side. Oh, it's not a shark at all. You just encountered the heaviest bonefish in the world, the sunfish. It can grow up to 14 feet long, and it lives deep down in the ocean. What you're seeing is the sunfish surfacing. Some people call it the mola mola. It mostly dines on jellyfish and can dive down anywhere from 600 to 2600 feet. It's not sunbathing or anything. It's letting seabirds eat any little bugs that try to get away with a free ride. A delicious meal, I'm sure. Yeah. The sunfish is so large and heavy, it's extremely difficult for scientists to study it, especially when it swims down so deep. The mola mola, just like the jellyfish, is not even a fish. It's a plankton. It's kind of a laid-back creature that drifts with the current rather than swimming against it like normal fish. The sheep's head fish lives around the Gulf of Mexico and off the West Atlantic. It lives quite far down from the surface, and I hope it stays down there. Its teeth help snag its favorite food, shellfish. While it may look scary at first, the sheep's head fish is a regular at fish markets and some restaurants if you're game to try it. I know I wouldn't eat anything with teeth that looked like mine. The world's most misunderstood fish also happens to look like the saddest. The blobfish lives deep down off the coasts of Australia and New Zealand. It's considered one of the strangest creatures ever caught, and for good reason. This fish just isn't made for the surface. It looks like a melting pile of goo with a frown. One thing we know about deep-sea fish is that we don't know anything about what really goes on down there. So, you make it to dry land, and you hear a deep grumbling sound coming from the muddy sand nearby. Some strange eel-like animals are moving around. They might be cute, but picking one up might be a big mistake. They might mistake your finger for a nice mid-afternoon snack. The giant mud skipper lives throughout Southeast Asia and, surprisingly, can outrun a human if needed for a little while at least. They love muddy water, so they mostly hang out near shorelines. What makes these fish unique is that they spend most of their time out of the water. Although they only grow to about one foot long, they can jump about two feet. The walking trees of the Amazon are one of the biggest secrets of the forest. You head over there. These trees aren't walking around with legs like you or me, but they're still able to move about 60 feet every year or two. What happens is that new roots search for sunlight while the old roots leave the soil, one root in front of the other. Their movements are incredibly slow. You won't be able to sit there and watch them strut their stuff. But if you've got nothing but time on your hands, you'll notice the trees shifting week by week, trying to find the best possible light. You're walking in the West African jungle, whistling away. You pick up a small stick to get rid of some spider webs in your path. It's all good until you realize that stick is tickling your hand and bending. Lucky for you, you just picked up a giant African millipede. They grow to about a foot long, so they kind of look like a small snake. That tickling you feel is their 250 legs wiggling around. These millipedes are part of the same family as crabs and spiders, but they only really eat plants and fallen leaves. You pop over to Nevada for a nice walk. Hey, why not? It's way too hot, so you decide to jump into that nice pool of water you just found. The only problem? This place is way off limits, and swimming definitely isn't allowed. Why? Because of what could be the rarest fish in the world, the pupfish. They only grow about an inch long, and they only live here. They're precious and protected fish, so read the signs and don't even think about going swimming anywhere near them. 
The pupfish's backyard pool has another claim to fame. It's an earthquake indicator. When there's an earthquake, say in Indonesia, Japan, or China, waves start popping up right there in Nevada. You wouldn't be wrong for wanting to get your eyes checked if you saw this little guy sniffing around. The star-nosed mole is one of the weirdest creatures anywhere. Each one of the feelers on its nose help the almost blind mole find its food. Its nose is so sensitive, it can feel five times more than a human hand. That's not all. Star-nosed moles are also the world's fastest eaters. Wow, faster than me. They can even smell around for food underwater. Is there anything this mole can't do? Tardigrades, or as they're sometimes called, water bears, are one of the most interesting creatures on the planet, and also the craziest. These microscopic animals are the toughest creatures on Earth. How tough, you ask? Well, you can find them in the deepest parts of the ocean, high up on mountaintops, in volcanoes, rainforests, and even Antarctica. They're also the first animals to survive exposure to outer space. They can sleep for thousands of years without any food or water, and then get up and walk it off like it was nothing. The water bear could rule the planet, if only it was a little bigger. The blue glaucus looks something like out of a sci-fi movie. But no, this little animal is the weird uncle of the sea slug family, and you definitely don't want to pick it up. It blends perfectly into the ocean waves as it floats on the surface. The glaucus's bright shade of blue helps it melt into its background, but that's not what makes it special. Its sting is quite potent and not very pleasant, but the glaucus doesn't even produce its own venom. It just steals it off of other venomous water creatures. Not bad for something that's only an inch long. How about a delicious coconut? You need to regroup after seeing so many weird animals. Luckily, a coconut just fell from that tree. Although, something else fell as well. It seems like this coconut's already got an owner. Coconut crabs find coconuts on the floor and rip off that hairy brown stuff that's all over them. Then they grab the coconut with a claw and climb up a tree. From there, they chuck it down to the ground to open it up. So the crab's up there, and its lunch is down on the ground. No problem! Coconut crabs love to jump from trees and can land unharmed from a 15-foot fall. This is one crab you wouldn't want to try to catch with your hands. The coconut crab's claw is the strongest of all crustaceans. If it can bust through a coconut, hmm, yeah. By now, you've seen your share of crazy, but no one is prepared for the hagfish. This fish looks like an eel, but with one extra superpower, slime. Less than a teaspoon of slime, when combined with water, can multiply up to 10,000 times. Once the hagfish oozes out its slime, nothing can get close. And what if some of the slime gets in its own nose? It learned to sneeze it out. They're also boneless and made entirely out of cartilage. Last one for today, introducing the purple frog. Not a very exciting name, I know. The purple frog is a strange-looking frog species. It looks like it just ate way too much, and it's got a nose like no other. What makes this creature even stranger is that it lives underground, and I don't mean just for a short while. The purple frog only comes out of its hole for two weeks a year. It mainly eats termites it finds underground, so why would it bother coming up to the surface at all? The Megalodon was the biggest shark to ever live. Not only that, it's one of the biggest fish and the largest predator in Earth's history. Over three times longer than the biggest great white shark on record, the females have also been found to be twice the size of the males. The Megalodon could swallow a small car without even touching its teeth, if cars had been around then. In fact, the Meg was so big and powerful that it had no naturing freely from ocean to ocean. This cosmopolitan creature was found all over the world from America to Europe and Australia and Japan, assuming there were countries back then. Meg fossils have been found on every continent except Antarctica. Everybody skips Antarctica. Science tells us that the Megalodon went extinct over 3.6 million years ago, but could they still be alive at the deepest depths of the ocean? 
The fearsome name, Megalodon, comes from two Greek words, megas, meaning big, and odont, meaning tooth. Combined, they mean big tooth, and it certainly lived up to its name. Just one of its chompers is the same size as a human head. It had 276 humongous teeth in total, across five terrifying rows. In all of history, only a couple of saber-toothed cats and the T-Rex had consistently bigger teeth. Now that's a showdown I'd like to watch. The Megalodon vanished millions of years ago, leaving only huge teeth to be found by modern archaeologists. Only around 80% of the ocean has been explored, so who knows what's lurking at the bottom. If you did manage to make it down, it's unlikely that you'll run into Meg, though. The sharks, like us, preferred warm coastal waters. Deep ocean living would be too cold for the beasts, and food would be scarce. Their entire bodies would also have to evolve to avoid being squished by the enormous water pressure down there. It's unlikely that they're still around, but not impossible. Now, about the appearance of the Megalodon. Scientists believe it didn't look like a great white shark. The Megalodon belongs to a different fish family and most likely looked like a giant sand tiger shark. Flattened snout, small eyes, its dorsal fin moved backward. The sand shark has two dorsal fins about the same size. The coloration is light brown with a white belly. It may have had brown red spots like a sand shark all over its body. We used to think of the Megalodon as something scary from the first finds of its fossils. That was back in the Renaissance era. People found some teeth in the rocks. At first, these teeth were thought to be the tongues of dragons or snakes. And here is the first drawing of what the owner of these teeth supposedly looked like. A massive snout with a scary nose and a bunch of razor-sharp teeth. The Megalodon is usually described as a sort of giant great white shark, but this is just a common myth. In fact, the ancestors of today's great white existed at the same time as the Meg. But they weren't the best buddies and were even in competition with each other. The great white shark was a better hunter, using its smaller size and agility to snap up Meg's prey quickly. They were also known to eat Meg pups, who were only half their size. This didn't help the whole extinction thing. We also have evidence that megalodons were brutal hunters, kings of the food chain. The first combat tool in their arsenal was the battering ram. The megalodon would take its prey by surprise. It had only one chance to hit it. If it missed, it would take too long for a second round. The maneuverability of the megalodon was comparable to a large truck. While a great white was no match for an adult Meg in a head-to-head -head fight, they sure weren't scared of stealing their food. This only left the bigger fish and whales for the Meg. But its food supplies began to run out as the whales swam to the cooler new seas. The whales adapted to prefer the colder temperatures, leaving our friend the Meg behind. The Megalodons either starved or were frozen into extinction by the Ice Age. Rather than a great white, the Megalodon is more like a modern bull shark. It had a short snout, a flat lower jaw, and huge pectoral fins to support its massive weight and size. As scary as they are, these sharks were actually caring family guys. Several megalodon nursery areas have been discovered in Florida, Maryland, and Panama. They gave birth to their young in shallow water environments. We know this from discovering loads of tiny megalodon teeth found in these areas. I wonder if they had nannies too. But how come there are so many megalodon teeth out there for us to analyze? Due to their messy, aggressive eating habits, sharks regularly lose their teeth. They lose a set of teeth every one to two weeks. That's 40,000 teeth in a lifetime. They must rake in a fortune from the tooth fairy. Because of this, their teeth were continually raining down to the ocean floor. Luckily for us, they're also the hardest part of the shark skeleton which is why so many teeth have survived and become fossilized. It's fair to say the first discoveries of the Meg's teeth confused people. Early discoverers thought that the Meg's teeth were petrified tongues of ancient serpent creatures. They even used to call them tongue stones. It's also a common myth that the Megalodon was around at the same time as the dinosaurs, although this would have been pretty cool. The dinosaurs were wiped out around 66 million years ago. But the megalodons came much later. The oldest meg fossil is only around 23 million years old, 
but it's tricky to pinpoint the exact date. After all, calendars weren't invented yet. They became extinct way before humans even evolved. The earliest Homo sapiens, which is a fancy name for the first humans, emerged about 2.5 million years ago. But what if the megalodon shark didn't go extinct? Whale populations have dropped drastically since these guys were last around, so there'd be way fewer whales for them to chomp down on. Whales have also gotten a lot smarter and learned new defensive moves, making them way harder to take down. It's estimated that they ate around 12 tons of food each day. The Kraken is a colossal squid, a legendary sea monster, the biggest hunk of calamari you ever saw. And if this monster had existed, the world would have changed beyond recognition. The Kraken has powerful tentacles, solid muscles with suckers at the end. They're impossible to escape. The Kraken can break a ship in half or just pull it down into the depths. But the worst thing about the Kraken is its size. According to old sailors' stories, its size is almost 10 soccer fields. Hey, maybe the Kraken could play soccer. The Kraken legends said the monster was so giant that sailors mistook it for a small island. In past centuries, it would have been impossible to defeat such a beast. If the Kraken existed in reality, it might have had offspring. Yeah, in all the world's oceans, there would be giant monsters that could sink any ship. It's unlikely that the Kraken would have competitors in its habitat, so its population would grow strongly. Since the Kraken is enormous, it would need a lot of food, so the population of other large sea animals would fall significantly. Blue whales, great white sharks, other giant squids, all the big sea creatures would be endangered. The Kraken belongs to the cephalopod genus. This species includes squid and octopus, some of the most intelligent creatures on the planet. The Kraken is a skilled hunter and will never fight in the open. Colossal squids live in deep waters and they have the largest eyes among all animals. The squid's eye is the size of a dinner plate. Thanks to this, they can see their prey from far away. Similarly, a Kraken would spot the ship much sooner than sonar could pick up the Kraken. It would always have the drop on you. Well, that's not good. In 1857, a squid beak was discovered on the coast of Denmark. Other huge squid remains were found in the Bahamas, and then scientists were convinced that gigantic squids existed. While colossal squid have been officially discovered since then, it's been more than 100 years and we still don't know what the max size they can grow to. The fact is, colossal squids are one of the most elusive creatures on Earth. They live in the depths of the ocean where it's challenging for scientists to reach. Any dive to a greater depth requires powerful, bulky equipment. Underwater bathyscaphs and cameras make a lot of noise and light, which squids notice from afar. They flee before we can see them. It's difficult to say if these huge squids were the size of a small island, but the truth is, we've only studied about 5% of the ocean. It may be that in its depths, Monsters much more terrible than the Kraken swim. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Some sharks have an eerie ability to spit out their stomach and then pull it back into place. Well, that would be handy. Most sharks eat huge amounts of food. But the problem is they can't digest everything they've gulped down. So they need a way to get rid of such stuff as sea turtle shells and beaks, bird feathers and bones, lobster claws and whatnot. And then these amazing creatures willingly barf up their whole stomach, along with all the contents. After the shark is done, it pulls its main digestive organ back in. And the entire process usually takes no more than a second. Some shark species, like great whites or mako, have a special eye-warming system. Their retina heats up their eyes and brain. This not only helps them detect movement better, but also improves resolution. As for the mako shark, this species often travels vertically across different temperatures. Unlike most people with only one movable jaw, sharks can freely move both their lower and upper jaws. This allows them to get a better grip on their meal and chew it up faster and more thoroughly. That's comforting. Sharks give birth to a large number of little ones at once. 
It depends on the species, of course, but let's say the blue shark is famous for producing more than 130 pups at a time. Great white sharks have a more powerful bite than most jungle cats. A 20-foot-long underwater hunter can produce a force of more than 4,000 pounds per square inch. And that's a bite four times stronger than that of a lion or tiger. People with their measly 150 to 200 psi bites aren't in the running whatsoever. Swell sharks defend themselves by swallowing huge amounts of water. Then the shark's body becomes twice its normal size, and this scares potential danger away. Sharks can grow more than 50,000 teeth during their lifetime, but not all of their teeth are the same. The strongest and most massive ones are at the front, and those closer to the back are smaller and not so powerful. But if the front teeth are damaged, these weaker ones can replace them. It's possible because sharks' teeth aren't as deeply rooted as humans and can move. Shark skin has the same feel as sandpaper. It's made of teeny teeth-like scales. They point towards the animal's tail. This helps to reduce the friction that occurs when sharks move through the water. Whale sharks have extremely thick skin. In some places on their body, it can be 6 inches thick. It's one of the toughest in the animal world. Scientists have to make loads of effort if they want to get this creature's blood sample. Sharks have an incredible sense of smell. But besides that, they use one more sense to detect other animals. There are special pores around their head, near the nostrils, and under the snout. Those are special organs, something like second sight. Every creature generates a tiny electrical field. Thanks to the pores, sharks can spot these electrical fields and figure out where other animals are. Sharks are incredibly sharp-eared. They can hear their potential meal from 3,000 feet away. They can also catch low-frequency sounds, like the ones produced by a fish's contracting muscle tissue. Sharks have been around for more than 400 million years. It means they've lived through four out of five mass extinctions. This makes them way older than Mount Everest, humans, dinosaurs, and even trees. These creatures go back to the period when coral reefs were just beginning to form. Some shark species can jump out of the water, like the great white shark or the basking shark. They're known to leap from more than 8 feet up into the air. Thanks to this maneuver, they can catch such animals as seals or seabirds. But unless you're in South Africa, you aren't likely to see sharks jumping out of the water. Shark skeletons are made of muscle and cartilage, which are lighter and twice less dense than bones. This makes sharks more flexible, which allows them to make sharp turns when they're chasing other animals. Hammerhead sharks have a weirdly shaped head for a reason. Thanks to it, these creatures have incredible 360-degree vision. Their eyes are tilted a bit forward, and it allows them to have an overlapping field of view. The goblin shark's terrifying jaws are attached to elastic ligaments. They can unfold from the animal's snout for up to 3 inches. It allows the animal to catapult its mouth forward to catch other marine creatures. Sharks don't sleep as you do. Some species have to keep swimming all the time. Otherwise, water will stop flowing through their gills and they won't be able to breathe. Others do rest, but they don't enter an unconscious state. They just go into special rest periods. These creatures don't have eyelids. That's why their eyes remain always open and their pupils monitor their surroundings. They also keep their mouth open so that the water can pass through their gills. Sharks can travel remarkably long distances without needing any rest all thanks to their bizarre sleeping pattern. For example, great whites can swim distances of more than 2,000 miles without stopping to eat or rest. How come these creatures don't starve? They draw on the fat stored in their livers. By the way, this organ can compose up to a third of the animal's body weight. Contrary to popular belief, sharks do not and cannot swim in reverse. Their tails propel them forward, and their pectoral fins help them to keep their balance and turn. It means that, anatomically, these animals can't move in any direction other than forward. Sharks have no vocal cords. They can't produce sounds to communicate with one another or express their emotions. That's why they have to use body movements, like twisting their bodies or flipping over. Sharks live in all of the world's oceans, but several species also inhabit freshwater rivers and lakes. For instance, bull sharks have been found in tropical rivers. They're also known to be able to swim between fresh and salt water. The smallest shark out there is the dwarf lantern shark. This unique creature doesn't grow longer than 8 inches. 
but the shark makes up for its tiny size in other ways. For example, some of its organs emit light. And since the creature lives in the shallow waters, this helps to camouflage it in the rays of sunlight. Blue sharks eat a lot, often more than they need. Some of this food can remain undigested for weeks till it's needed for energy. Sharks have something that looks similar to a tongue, but this organ is called the basheal. It's the front section of the cartilage that goes from the shark's chest to its mouth. It doesn't move and is pretty much useless. The so-called tongue doesn't take part in the process of feeding. It isn't covered in taste buds. Its only real use might be that it supports some of the bones connecting the shark's gills. There are hundreds of shark species in the world, more precisely, around 500. Some of them are pretty bizarre. Just look at the goblin, basking, or cookie-cutter shark. All these sharks vary in size, from several inches to dozens of feet long. They also live in absolutely different environments. Tiger sharks eat whatever they can get their jaws around. Some of the weirdest things they've munched on are video cameras, bags of money, license plates from almost any U.S. state, dog leashes, <laughs> you name it. Each whale shark has a unique pattern on its skin. These spots and stripes can be used to identify individual sharks, just like fingerprints are used to identify people. The blunt-nosed six-gill shark can dive to a depth as great as five Empire State Buildings. Baby sharks are called pups. When they get born or hatch, they are already fully nourished. And if they choose to swim away from their mama shark, they don't need to hunt for food for at least several weeks. Uh-oh, did somebody say baby shark? Have you ever heard of an island that is regularly attacked by sharks? For many years, people living there haven't been able to find a way to stop this. Neither can they understand why sharks come there so often. So, what's going on? Why do these predators keep bothering this specific island while completely ignoring the others in the area? Let's go to this mysterious place and try to find out. July 22, 2015. The ocean waters near Reunion Island were clear and transparent. The western part of the island, St. Lou, had always been a great spot for surfing. But on this pleasant sunny day, one of the locals almost lost his life. A six-foot bull shark appeared out of nowhere. Once right next to the shore, it suddenly charged at surfer Rodolf Ariagui. His friend, doctor, and professor of geography at the University of La Reunion, Erwan Lagabriel, was nearby, talking with two other surfers at that moment. Suddenly, they heard some noise. Realizing that it was his friend, Lagabriel rushed to help. The shark was 65 feet away from him. He said that all of this felt like some kind of a horror movie. He rushed to Ariagi, even though he didn't understand what exactly had happened. At first, Ariagi's body was surrounded by white foam. It then began to turn pink, and then red. La Gabrielle said later that it had been one of the scariest things he had seen in his life. Fortunately, when he swam closer, the shark had already been gone. La Gabrielle knew that in most cases, a second attack doesn't happen, so he hurried to help his friend. It took them some time to get back to the shore. When La Gabrielle pulled his friend onto the beach, he immediately made a tourniquet from a surfboard leash. After that, Monsieur Ariagui was rushed to the hospital. Fortunately, this story has a good ending. Although the 45-year-old man lost his arm, he still survived. But he was one of the few lucky ones. Because this horrifying story is just one of dozens that happened on Reunion Island in recent decades. Reunion Island is one of the regions of France. It's located right near Madagascar, together with its neighbor, Mauritius. They're both located at the same latitude as Australia. These two islands are very similar. They have almost the same climate and natural conditions, similar languages and cultures. But there's one huge difference between the two of them. In Mauritius, people can relax and have fun in the warm waters of the Indian Ocean, swimming with scuba gear and watching dolphins. Meanwhile, on La Reunion, locals are afraid even to put their fingers in the water. But why is that? Unfortunately, Reunion now has a strong reputation as a shark island. By 2018, 56 attacks had occurred there. From 2011 to 2016, 
the number of these cases accounted for 16% of the worldwide shark attacks. Now, there are warning signs everywhere on Reunion. Local citizens and fishers have begun to discuss the options of large-scale shark trapping. The authorities forbid people to swim almost everywhere, except for a few more or less safe places, like, for example, a coral lagoon. And still, any fisher or scientist knows that sharks can easily get inside these coral rings. In other words, locals and tourists can't feel completely safe anywhere on the island. Meanwhile, in Mauritius, the last shark attack happened in the 1980s. People come here to relax, and everything is perfectly fine. So the question is, why in the world is La Reunion so unlucky? Dr. La Gabrielle, the hero I mentioned before, set himself the goal of explaining this strange phenomenon. His study showed that over the past 30 years, the probability of a shark attack on Reunion had increased by 23 times. And in 9 out of 10 cases, it turns out to be a bull shark. If you haven't heard about it, this creature looks exactly like what you would imagine when you hear the word shark. It's one of the most popular species and the one that you often see in different movies and cartoons. These sharks live in tropical and subtropical waters in all oceans. Most often, they're found, yeah, you've probably already guessed, in the southern waters between Australia and South Africa. This place is even nicknamed a shark highway because these predators really, really like to chill around there. This is also one of the most aggressive shark species, and it's very dangerous for humans. Unfortunately, it's also very tolerant to different water salinity, which means they can basically swim even in fresh water and be totally cool with it. But why do all these reunion island attacks happen so often? Well. There are many theories and many different factors that might play their role in all this. Mark Soria, a researcher at the IRD, the French National Institute for Research and Development, decided to conduct a study together with his team. They spent three years trying to collect data on 45 tiger sharks and 38 bull sharks living in local waters. The National Research Institute of France supported this study. It was also funded by three research foundations, regional, national, and European. That's when you know that the problem is serious. And now, here are the main theories developed by Saria's team and La Gabrielle. The first one is excessive fishing. Experts suggest that long-term fishing and catching small reef sharks, which competed with dangerous sharks for food and territory, eventually led to these dramatic consequences. Unfortunately, when predatory bull sharks ran out of food, they just had to go looking for it near the coast. For bull sharks, surfers on Reunion look like sick, weakened fish, and therefore an easy meal. Also, while in Mauritius, surfers tend to hang out near sandy beaches. On Reunion, they choose places where waves break at coral reefs. But this is exactly where the sharks choose to search for food. So, yeah. The second possible reason is muddy waters. Bull sharks like such conditions very much, and although there are no natural places like these on Reunion, the reason could be the construction of urban areas. Muddy fresh water gets into bays from cities. This water attracts sharks, and this is where the attacks take place most often. But then we can ask again, why not Mauritius? Urbanization is also in full swing there after all. There are many places in Mauritius where sewage waters flow into the ocean. Well, then we can conclude that this is not the only factor. There have to be others. For example, there is an active volcano, Piton de la Fournaise, on Reunion Island. Thanks to this beautiful volcano, there are rich flora and fauna on the island. And this could be great if it didn't attract too much attention from predators. Because of the volcano, the shores of Reunion are less steep, which makes it easier to swim closer to the coast and sedimentary rocks that get washed away from the slopes of the volcano can attract bull sharks. As we already know, these guys love muddy waters. There are some other theories. For example, La Gabrielle suggests that attacks may be connected to an increase in the shark population. Or maybe that's because these creatures become more aggressive during mating periods. Some people assume that all of this could be Mauritius's fault because they banned catching and selling sharks for meat. But Saria and other experts strongly disagree with this. 
not many people on both islands bought this meat to make any significant difference. Anyway, this whole situation caused a lot of tension on Reunion. A big part of the population now supports the idea of catching sharks on a large scale. They also built some underwater fences near the island, and the maintenance of these fences costs a million dollars a year. It may seem pretty extreme, but drastic times require drastic measures. But despite all these terrible stories, in general, sharks aren't nearly as dangerous as we think. They almost never attack divers, unless a person provokes them. Experienced divers often compare sharks with stray dogs. These animals shouldn't be feared, but should be respected. Anyway, let's hope that La Reunion will be able to solve this problem, and people will be able to swim in its warm, beautiful waters again. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Okay, so both of these animals live in the water. Other than that, there's little in common between them. A smaller one is a warm-blooded mammal, highly intelligent and curious, just like me. Its long streamlined body is usually either blue or gray, but there are also brown and even pink species. Ranging in size from 6 to 30 feet long, dolphins don't weigh more than 11 tons. Their slippery, hairless skin that feels rubbery to the touch is probably their most famous feature. The other animal is a notorious prehistoric predator, just like me. Growing about 60 feet long, it weighed almost five times more than the largest dolphin. Its size, huge serrated teeth, and incredible speed, well, that's what made the Meg the most feared creature in the ocean 23 to 3.5 million years ago. So, the question is, who would you rather meet while swimming in the ocean? A dolphin, a megalodon, or me? Oops, not me, never mind. In comparison with the sharp-toothed monster, dolphins look cute and totally harmless. But imagine the following picture. It's a hot summer day. It seems only logical to go for a swim in the sea. You're floating on your back, completely relaxed. Your eyes are closed, your breath even. Waters pleasantly cool around your body. A light breeze touching your face. You feel calm enough to doze off. Suddenly, something bumps into your leg. Yanked out of your half slumber, you begin to flail until you're face to face with the invisible danger. Luckily, all you spot is a couple of easily recognizable fins and cute, smiley snouts. Whew! Just dolphins. Guess you're lucky to meet them in the wild. These amazing creatures are so close you can touch them. You've heard people say dolphin skin feels rubbery, but to your mind, it's more like the inner part of a hard-boiled egg. One of the animals is so close to you that its salty smell fills your nostrils. You know, though, that dolphins don't have sweat glands. It means they don't sweat and are pretty much odorless. The smell you sense comes from the water they swim in. At first, you feel curious. The dolphins seem eager to interact with you, too. They circle around but keep some distance. Soon, you can already count 7 or 10 animals swimming nearby. And then, uh-oh, are they playing with you? First one animal, then another. They come closer and push you with their noses as if you were a ball. It doesn't hurt since they're rather delicate and careful. While passing you from one to another, they make funny sounds. You can't but giggle at the dolphins' antics. Some time has passed, and you don't feel like laughing anymore. The animals are getting too bold, and their pushes grow stronger. All of a sudden, you realize that you're pretty far away from the shore, surrounded by wild, massive animals. Even though they look friendly, their behavior is totally unpredictable, and the worst is yet to come. The largest of the dolphins comes up with an idea of swimming under you, then diving deep down to the bottom. This creates a whirlpool, and it starts to pull you inside with an enormous force. The dolphin reappears, then dives once more. Soon, you don't have enough time to get some air into your lungs. After every 5 seconds at the surface, your body gets dragged underwater again. And again! Several more dolphins join the game. You're shocked, disoriented, and worn out. It's impossible to keep up with the animals, and you rapidly lose strength. At one moment, you realize with frightening clarity that you're drowning. 
The only thing that gives you hope is that from time to time, some of the dolphins push you back up to the surface. They probably guess that if you drown, the game will lose its fun for them. Yeah, it won't be fun for you either. The whole thing can't have lasted longer than 10 or 15 minutes, but for you, it's been an eternity. After the animals get bored, you muster up all your strength and swim toward the beach as fast as you can. The dolphins don't follow you. Exhausted and trembling, you manage to get out of the water and fall down on the sand. The only thought in your mind is, now I understand why sharks are afraid of these cute creatures. And indeed, the most feared predator of the sea would do anything not to cross paths with a dolphin. These mammals have flexible skeletal joints and soft skin. It makes it easier for them to maneuver while dealing with their toothy counterparts. Dolphin snouts are made of thick and strong bone. Animals use them to protect themselves from enemies. For example, a dolphin can swim under a shark and burst upward, aiming at its underbelly. Such a jab is so powerful that it causes serious internal injuries. Shark tails have vertical planes. It limits their abilities. They can't move upward or downward fast enough. Dolphins have horizontal planes on their tails. That's why they can change directions almost instantly. Sharks are solitary creatures, and dolphins prefer traveling in groups, also called pods. When one pod member is in danger, its mates immediately come to the rescue. Sharks often try to use their mighty jaws to take down dolphins. But their only chance is to find the animal's blind spot or catch it unawares. If the first shark's attempt is unsuccessful, the dolphin will either escape or regroup and call its friends to help fight the enemy. Dolphins are not only smart and agile, they're also incredibly fast. Their speed usually exceeds that of most shark species. Such an elusive meal isn't worth the effort. Orcas, the largest members of the dolphin family, hunt sharks when they can't find other food sources. An orca uses its super strong tail fins to hit a shark on the back. This makes the massive fish unable to move. Sharks stay away from dolphins, and maybe you should too. For one thing, these animals have sharp teeth and a strong bite. Bottlenose dolphins have up to 100 teeth, more than enough to grip their prey and keep it immobile. Bottlenose dolphins sometimes gather in large groups of up to 1,000 animals. When all of them set off for a hunt at the same time, it looks scary. But more often, they travel in pods of 10 to 15 members. If a dolphin decides you're a menace, it might attack you. Getting shoved with its long, hard nose isn't a pleasant experience. Combine it with the speed at which the animal is barreling towards you, and the outcome of such an encounter looks ghastly. You won't be able to outswim a dolphin even if you're excellent at sports. This animal can glide through the water at more than 20 miles per hour, all thanks to its powerful tail and streamlined shape. For comparison, an Olympic swimmer's top speed is around 5 miles per hour. Thanks to their impressive speed, dolphins can launch themselves out of the water. And I'm not talking about leaping beautifully over the waves. These animals have enough power to lunge 16 feet up into the air. Bottlenose dolphins are top ocean predators. When hungry, they turn into cunning, calculating creatures that find unusual ways to trap their prey. While watching dolphins in the shallow waters in Florida, scientists notice a curious thing. Animals use their tails to stir up the mud so that fish couldn't get away. And in Australia, dolphins were spotted using sponges to dig smaller animals out of the seafloor. Even better, they share new methods of hunting with their mates. Sometimes even recipes. Just kidding. You can't escape from an angry dolphin by hiding in the depths. They can dive to more than 800 feet under the surface. The deepest a human has ever free-dived is 702 feet. Sharks are known to leave surfers alone and mind their own business. Dolphins, on the other hand, seem to like taunting people. There have been cases when they deliberately pushed surfboards until surfers fell off into the water and then jumped over them. If a dolphin comes close to you and starts to tail slap, you better get out of the water right away. It's likely to be a sign the animal's about to attack you. Dolphin snouts look smiley. That's why they seem friendly, kind, and harmless. But keep in mind, it's yet another wild animal. Yes, they're highly intelligent and cool. 
but be careful around them and try to keep your distance. Hey, if nothing else works, toss them a fish. In the left corner, Megalodon, considered the largest and most dangerous predator in the aquatic world. It has a reputation as a cold-blooded hunter who can break a fishing boat with one bite. We're gonna need a bigger boat. But what if he comes face to face with another giant water monster? In the right corner, Mosasaurus, an ancient dinosaur reptile which existed about 80 million years ago on the vast Atlantic Ocean. Their diet was large fish, giant turtles, other mosasauruses, and even birds. So glad I'm not on the menu, ha <laughs> ha! But to find out if this reptile can defeat the most massive shark that ever existed, we'll compare these monsters in several categories. Let's start with size. Megalodon became extinct 3 million years ago, but is still considered the largest and most dangerous predator in the ocean. We can only guess at the real size of Megalodon. The only remains found of this giant shark are teeth and vertebrae. Kinda sounds like my grandma. She used to leave her teeth everywhere. But with the help of calculations and computer modeling, scientists have concluded that Megalodon's length could be about 50 feet. It's like a New York City subway car. Except it won't try to eat you. Now let's have a look at the right corner. The size of the Mosasaurus also remains a subject of discussion, but it's believed that the average length of this monster was about 36 feet. That's the size of a school bus. But in 2016, scientists found the largest Mosasaurus ever. Its length was 59 feet. Compare this to the tallest person ever, 8 feet. Mosasaurus was 7 times larger. Hey, nice job on the quick math! The first win goes to the Mosasaurus. One to nothing in favor of the ancient reptile. The next category is weight. Let's start with the fighter in the left corner. The most enormous individuals of the Megalodon species had an incredible weight from 27 to 59 tons. This is more than the weight of an empty Boeing 737 without the snacks and beverages. Although the Mosasaurus is longer, its weight isn't that much because of its body shape. Adult species could reach 14 tons, which is half the weight of a megalodon. For comparison, an adult blue whale can weigh up to 100 tons or even more. But whales are not the peak predators like megalodon and mosasaurus. In this category, megalodon wins and gets its first point. It's now one to one. Let's move on to the next category, speed and agility. Megalodon wasn't the fastest fish on Earth. He could reach a speed of about 11 miles per hour. For example, the quickest sea creature is the sailfish. It can swim 68 miles per hour. But this didn't prevent Megalodon from becoming the top predator in the aquatic world. The average person only swims at a speed of 2 miles per hour. But the Achilles heel of Megalodon is agility and maneuverability. In fact, Meg is a 50-ton truck, so he can't turn and change direction quickly. If he's going to attack, he has only one chance to hit, because if he has to go for a second lap, his prey will have the opportunity to scoot. The exact speed with which Mosasaurus could swim is unknown, but scientists think he borrowed his swimming style from the eel. He would push off with his tail and steer with small side fins. This provided him with incredible maneuverability. In theory, this could help him jump out of the water, just like a scene from Jurassic World. But to know the exact speed with which Mosasaurus could swim, we need to find more remains of this ancient reptile. Right now, the point in the speed and maneuverability category goes to Megalodon. Two to one in favor of the biggest shark of all time. Our next category is fighting instruments. First, we'll look at Megalodon's arsenal, his giant teeth. They were extremely sharp because of their triangular shape, and they reach 7 inches long. Megalodon's teeth are considered to be the largest that ever existed, and it had 250 of them. They were placed in five rows and could easily penetrate the thick skin of whales and other ancient creatures. In addition, the jaw itself was incredible. It was 6.5 feet wide. The average person could easily fit in there standing at full height. Boy, wouldn't that fall into the stupid selfie category. <clears throat> the muscle strength combined with the giant maw gave Megalodon one of the strongest bites on our planet. The primary tool of the Mosasaurus is the jaw. 
Its jaw held 40 to 50 sharp and massive teeth. They were conical in shape to penetrate even the thickest skin, like a knife through butter. And the jaw itself was similar to a snake's. So Mosasaurus was able to swallow colossal prey without even chewing. In some of the discovered remains of Mosasaurus, perfectly preserved remains of fish were found, and they were 3 feet long. The Mosasaurus' head was a little over 2 feet long. And although this jaw wouldn't be enough to swallow Megalodon as a whole, it could bite off a pretty big piece of him, or even just rip off its tail. For this ultimate combat tool, the Mosasaurus gets the point. The score is tied 2-2. Two to two. The last category is combat skills. Although Megalodon has a giant mass and sharp teeth, he reached the top of the food chain for another reason – intelligence. Scientists found many remains of whales with scars from Megalodon's teeth. These findings have helped to understand the hunting tactics of this giant shark. It turned out that Meg could find weaknesses in other marine creatures and knew where their vital organs were located. Other remains had many fractures. Apparently, the victim had experienced Megalodon's 50-ton ram. It could easily have broken through concrete walls. The whales didn't stand a chance. With the help of strategy and tactics, Megalodon could have handled prey much bigger than himself. He could attack the whale's tail and fins until he was completely immobilized. And then, when the victim was defenseless, well, like they say, dinner is served. Unlike sharks that love to ambush, Mosasauruses were quite aggressive. Scientists found many remains of the Mosasauruses with traces of teeth marks from their own species. Whether they fought for food or territory is unknown, but we know for sure that their fights were brutal. The remains had many fractures, but they didn't ram their victims. No, they grabbed its head and actively bit and struggled, breaking its bones. Such a technique is used by modern crocodiles. Also, the Mosasauruses had excellent vision, which gave them a chance to see the victim from afar and attack unexpectedly. Before we move on to the fight, a bonus round! Audience Sympathy Prize Megalodon has appeared in many different movies, TV series, and comics, and each of its appearances has inspired fear in the audience. He really has a reputation as an ideal predator, and I would bet my money on him. Mosasaurus, on the other hand, doesn't have many appearances in popular culture. But the scene where he eats a great white shark in one bite surprised spectators around the world. So this dinosaur has the potential to become a star. This, of course, doesn't affect the outcome of the fight. Oh, there's the gong! Now we'll find out who will win this fight. Opponents meet in the waters off the coast of North America. Mosasaurus noticed Megalodon from far away and attacked first. However, his teeth are not big enough, and he barely hurts the Meg. Now, the giant shark is attacking the reptile. Mosasaurus is very agile, and he easily dodges the slow blows of the Megalodon. They break apart. It's time to change tactics, and Megalodon decides to go for a trick. Mosasaurus is a reptile, though a huge one. This means it breathes air and swims underwater only by holding its breath. Meg begins to descend deeper, luring Mosasaurus into a trap. In deep water, the ancient reptile feels uncomfortable and begins to make mistakes. Megalodon attacks fins and tail, depriving the enemy of mobility. Once the Mosasaurus loses its tail, the battle ends. Oops. Megalodon has again proved that he is the king of the seas, and he deservedly stands at the top of the food chain. The Megalodon was the biggest shark to ever live. Not only that, it's one of the biggest fish and the largest predator in Earth's history. They've been known to reach lengths of up to a whopping 70 feet. That's over three times longer than the biggest great white shark on record. The females have also been found to be around twice the size of the males. The megalodon could swallow a small car without it even touching its teeth, if cars had been around that. Its teeth could grow to over 7 inches long. It looks like we're going to need a bigger boat, and best make it steel-plated, as this shark can easily gnaw its way through ships. The underwater terror could bite a ship clean in half with the highest bite force ever calculated for any animal, living or extinct. The force of its ferocious bite was up to 40,000 pounds. 
That's around 108,000 times the strength of a human's and 10 times the force of a modern crocodile's bite. Its chomp is so strong that it makes the T-Rex's bite look about as powerful as my granny's after she's taken her dentures out. In fact, the Meg was so big and powerful that it had no natural predators. It was the uncrowned king of the seas, swimming freely from ocean to ocean. This cosmopolitan creature was found all over the world, from America to Europe and Australia to Japan, assuming there were countries back then. Meg fossils have been found on every continent except Antarctica. Everybody skips Antarctica. Science tells us that the Megalodon went extinct over 3.6 million years ago. But could they still be alive at the deepest depths of the ocean? Only around 80% of the ocean has been explored, and its deepest point, the Mariana Trench, is over 7 miles down. So who knows what's lurking at the bottom? If you did manage to make it down, it is unlikely that you'll run into a meg, though. The sharks, like us, preferred warmer coastal waters. Deep ocean living would be too cold for the beasts, and food would be scarce. Their entire bodies would also have to evolve to avoid being squished by the enormous water pressure down there. It's unlikely they're still around, but not impossible. Some good news if you do run into one is that the shark is pretty unlikely to eat you. You are way too small a meal for the megalodon, even if you have a couple of friends with you. This guy eats whales that are over 50 feet long. If you're having a beach party, though, it's a different story. In a beach full of swimmers, the shark very well might creep up, scooping several humans into its giant mouth without even chewing. But wait, let's rewind. How does the shark take down a 50-foot whale? It first bites off its fins, making the whale unable to swim away. It then casually munches it down piece by piece. Because of their size, sharks had to consume over a ton of food every single day just to sustain themselves, like me. All that food made the megalodon extremely heavy. They range from anywhere between 50 to over 100 tons. For context, that's around the same as 7 to 16 adult male African elephants. To fit all this food in, their jaws had to open pretty wide. A megalodon's jaw could span 9 by 11 feet wide. That's easily big enough to swallow two adult humans side by side. The fearsome name megalodon comes from two Greek words, mega meaning big and odont meaning tooth. So combined, they mean what? Big tooth. And it certainly lives up to its name. Just one of its chompers is the same size as a human head. It had 276 humongous teeth in total across five terrifying rows. In all of history, only a couple of saber-toothed cats and the T-Rex had consistently bigger teeth. Now that's a showdown I'd like to watch. The megalodon vanished millions of years ago, leaving only huge teeth to be found by modern archaeologists. They literally disappeared with very few traces left. Scientists believe that, over time, sea levels dropped and the ocean temperatures went down rapidly. Over a third of all marine life was wiped out as the oceans cooled and a number of animals at the bottom of the food chain plummeted. This had a catastrophic effect on the hungry predators at the top. Sorry, guys. It became way too cold for these sun-loving sharks, too, which made it difficult for them to reproduce since they gave birth in warm waters. The megalodon is usually described as a sort of giant great white shark, but this is just a common myth. In fact, the ancestors of today's great white existed at the same time as the meg. But they weren't best buddies, and were even in competition with each other. The great white shark was a better hunter, using its smaller size and agility to snap up the meg's prey quickly. They were also known to eat meg pups, who were only half their size. This didn't help the whole extinction thing. Even infant megalodons were huge, coming in at just under 7 feet. While a great white was no match for an adult meg in a head-to-head -head fight, they sure weren't scared of stealing their food. This only left the bigger fish and whales for the meg, but its food supplies began to run out as the whales swam to the cooler new seas. The whales adapted to prefer the colder temperatures, leaving our friend the meg behind. The megalodons either starved or were frozen into extinction by the Ice Age. Rather than a great white, the megalodon is more like a modern bull shark. It had a short snout, flat lower jaw, and huge pectoral fins to support its massive weight and size. As scary as they are, these sharks were actually caring family guys. Several megalodon nursery areas have been discovered in Florida, Maryland, and Panama. They gave birth to their young in shallow water environments. We know this from discovering loads of tiny megalodon teeth found in these areas. Gee, I wonder if they had nannies, too. 
But how come there are so many megalodon teeth out there for us to analyze? Well, due to their messy, aggressive eating habits, sharks regularly lose their teeth. They lose a set of teeth every one to two weeks. That's 40,000 teeth in a lifetime. They must rake in a fortune from the tooth fairy. Because of this, their teeth were continuously raining down to the ocean floor. Luckily for us, they're also the hardest part of a shark skeleton, which is why so many teeth have survived and become fossilized. It's fair to say that the first discoveries of the Meg's teeth confused people. Early discoverers thought the Meg's teeth were petrified tongues of ancient serpent creatures. They even used to call them tongue stones. It's also a common myth that the Megalodon was around at the same time as the dinosaurs, although this would have been pretty cool. The dinosaurs were wiped out around 66 million years ago, but the Megalodons came much later. The oldest Meg fossil is only around 23 million years old, but it's tricky to pinpoint the exact date. After all, calendars weren't invented yet. They became extinct way before humans even evolved. The earliest Homo sapiens, which is a fancy name for the first humans, emerged about 2.5 million years ago. But what if the megalodon shark didn't go extinct? Whale populations have dropped drastically since these guys were last round, so there'd be way fewer whales for them to chomp down on. Whales have also gotten a lot smarter and learned new defensive moves, making them way harder to take down. It's estimated that they ate around 12 tons of food each day. If they were still around and eating that much, they'd be forced to eat smaller fish, and there'd be barely enough big fish for us humans to survive on. The naughty megalodons would also be able to track fishing boats and steal the fish that they worked hard to collect. It's safe to say we'd see a lot less fish in the aisles of your neighborhood supermarket. As our ocean temperatures are heating up again, the sharks would also thrive and reproduce faster than ever. There'd be more and more of these giant eating machines in the water, reducing our fish supply even more. It would also cause massive problems for cargo ships and cruising vessels. Imagine coming into contact with one of these bad boys while you're sunbathing on the deck. Even beachgoers would be hard hit. Megalodons give birth in shallow waters, so many of our favorite beaches would quickly become dangerous shark nursing grounds. Hey, where did that beach volleyball game go? They were playing just a moment ago. South Caribbean Sea, July 21st, 2047. Well, it's finally happened. The research institution you work for got word of a massive shark spotted off the coast of Panama. Local scientists confirm the impossible. It's a megalodon. And you've been sent with one mission, to study this thing up close and within. Hey, it's also your birthday, but the cake will have to wait. They've already got the specimen ready. With enough tranquilizer to take down 10 elephants, the Meg is immobile. But you're on a strict time limit. The sedation will wear off in a half an hour. All right, it's go time. The head researcher slaps you on the back. Good luck down there. And remember, don't get anywhere near that turbine. Oh, right. They set that up in front of the shark to keep water flowing through its gills. Without the continuous flow, the Meg wouldn't be able to breathe. Got it. And you jump overboard. You set the timer in your watch for 25 minutes, just to be safe. The shark isn't too far under the surface. 60 feet long, weighing probably 50 tons, it's the size of a train car. She's a big girl, all right. Males wouldn't get much bigger than 40 feet. You swim closer to her, remove one of your gloves, reach out, and touch her. Her skin is like sandpaper, covered in tiny teeth-like scales. They curve toward her tail fin and reduce drag as she swims. How is it going down there? Keep it quick. It's all good, Dr. Perez. I'll be done before you know it. You pull out your tablet and open the x-ray app. You hold it in front of you and run it along her body. The screen shows all the detail in her strong muscles. The red tissue needs oxygen and helps her cruise over long distances. Then there's white muscle tissue. It isn't oxygenated and is only used for sudden bursts of speed. You switch the setting to skeletal view. All the cartilage, the same flexible stuff your ears and nose are made of. It keeps the shark lightweight so she can zip through the water without expending too much precious energy. And zip she does, about 16 feet per second, twice as fast as the great white. The weight of her own body would crush her internal organs on land, since sharks have no rib cage. Hmm, let's see how old you are. You zoom in on her backbone. It's calcified, just like her jaw, making them both stronger. You do a crosscut of one of the discs in your app. 
The vertebrae have bands. Just like rings and trees, they tell the shark's age and growth history. You count them. 15. She's about halfway through her life. Her skull is made of a denser cartilage to protect the shark's Y-shaped brain. The snout is spongy and flexible, easily taking blows without breaking. 20 minutes left on the sedation. What's your status? The lead researcher radios in again. Muscular and skeletal analyses are done. Moving on to the sensory organs. Roger that. You swim up to one of her black, beady eyes. A chill goes down your spine. It's as if she's looking right at you, a helpless piece of meat, her next meal. Hey girl, if only you had eyelids to let me know you're definitely knocked out. Behind her eye, you see a tiny hole. Hey, found your ear. Sharks obviously don't have outer ears, but their hearing is still impeccable. This megafish could hear you thrashing in the water from 10 football fields away. It's the low frequencies of irregular splashes that catch her attention. They mean one thing, wounded prey. From there, you follow her lateral line, a line of pores extending down the sides of her body. It's a special system in sharks that detects the slightest movements in the water, how far away the source is, which direction is coming from. Basically, a shark's entire body is like one giant ear. Just gonna examine your nostrils, my dear. Strictly for sniffing out prey, they don't lead to the throat and respiratory system like in humans. Meaning, sharks can't sneeze. The smallest hint of an odor runs into the nasal passage. Past folds of skin covered in sensory cells, they send the info to the olfactory bulb, which leads to the brain. In great whites, the nose can pick up a single drop of blood in an Olympic-sized pool. You look at your watch. Ten minutes left. You examine her gills. Water flows through them, and the gills extract oxygen from it. This is also where the body gets rid of CO2, essentially carrying out the function of lungs. But the oxygen to carbon dioxide exchange happens at the cellular level, and the blood is what transports it. You switch to circulatory view. There it is, the S-shaped heart. It's small compared to her body size and has only two chambers. The heart sends blood to the gills, where it picks up oxygen and moves on to the body tissues. The muscles, constantly moving and propelling the shark through the water, warm up the blood. This can only happen because the veins and arteries moving to and away from the heart are located so close to each other. Blood that's warmer than her environment and not dependent on it, unlike other fish, allows the meg to hunt in cooler waters as well, even if she prefers warm areas. That means nothing can hide from her. Everything about her body is designed to sniff out and gobble up any prey. We're getting some fluctuations in the vitals. Come on, wrap it up. Almost done. One thing left, the thing you've been avoiding, her mouth and digestive tract. You swim up to her jaws, careful to keep your distance from the current flowing into her face. Her jaws have been propped open for better examination, and they're enormous. Ten feet across, nine feet high, you could stand in her mouth with a friend on your shoulders. They can open up to 100 degrees, enough to fit the biggest prey out there. Large fish, whales, even other sharks. She needs 2,500 pounds of food a day, more than the average person eats in a whole year. The jaws can come down with 30,000 pounds of force, like being crushed by a car. The great white can only boast a jaw force of 4,000 pounds. Humans, a piddly 160. Ooh, and those teeth, 250 of them in five rows. They're razor sharp and can cut right into whalebone. The teeth are slanted back towards the throat, so nothing can escape their grip. The biggest ones are the size of your hand. Fascinated, even hypnotized, you swim a little closer, just a couple more inches, when whoosh, the turbine's current carries you straight into her mouth. The force of the water is pushing you against the back of her throat. Your x-ray scanner shows a mouth chock full of sensory cells. Lucky for our species, sharks don't really like the taste of human. But they only realize that after an initial taste test. That's why sharks bite people. Not to eat them, just to sample what's on the menu. You pull out an apple-sized metal sphere and push it into her throat. The probe makes its way through the esophagus. A shark's food chute isn't a skinny tube like ours. It's wide and barely indistinguishable from the stomach. The stomach is U-shaped and full of extremely strong acids and enzymes. Those turn whatever the shark has swallowed whole – these animals don't chew their food – into a mushy liquid. 
From there, the soup moves into the intestines. They're relatively short for an animal this size. But evolution came up with a clever trick to increase the surface area. The inside of the intestine is shaped in a spiral. This is so she can absorb the nutrients from her meals. Meanwhile, on board, her vitals are coming to life. Perez tries to radio you, but a jumbled message barely gets through your earpiece. Get... hear me. Arcing up. What? Hello? Do you read me? You look at the timer. Five minutes. You should be able to swim out against the current, hopefully. As the probe makes its way through her digestive tract, from within her mouth, you grab one more x-ray of her body cavity. You see the liver. It's massive, takes up 90% of the space in there, and accounts for 25% of her weight. It's full of oils and helps with buoyancy in the water. But then, you see something moving within her. It's a pup. Shark babies are ready to hunt on their own as soon as they're born. This meg pup must be 7 feet long. But this means she's not the only one. Just then, the turbine shuts off. Your timer starts beeping. Hey, I still technically have 5 minutes. Wrong. The shark starts to move. You swim out of her mouth as fast as you can and with all your might head back to the boat. She's still a little groggy, but Miss Meggie can swim. She beelines toward you just as you break the surface. The team grabs your hand, pulls you on board, and the boat speeds away. At that moment, the Meg comes leaping out of the water. She follows you for a while, but loses interest soon enough. Whew, that was too close. (laughs) Happy birthday to me. Hey, time for some cake. Within the ocean waters, somewhere in the southern hemisphere, a ghostly black shadow looms deep down in the depths. Suspiciously swimming far below, the Megalodon is hunting for its next meal. With the appearance of a great white shark, but three times the size of the largest ever recorded, its intimidating design has evolved over millions of years, creating the ultimate natural predator. For millions of years, the intimidating evolutionary traits have gone unchecked and unopposed. With its keen senses, it detects its prey within three miles. As it swims below, it's been following an unsuspecting sea turtle that's slowly paddling above on a long voyage. The megalodon stalks the turtle, ensuring it makes its move toward the turtle at the right moment. Swimming upward at 11 miles per hour, intending to immobilize the turtle by ramming it. As it approaches, the megalodon's adept senses notice something else lurking nearby. Pausing its pursuit of the turtle, it adjusts and turns to face another, much larger object. The megalodon may be the largest marine predator to have ever lived on Earth, rightfully feared by all creatures within these waters, but not today. There is a newcomer to these parts, one that has a similar reputation and matches the megalodon in ferocity. This unknown creature intends to contest these hunting grounds. The challenger is the Leviathan. As the sea turtle takes this opportunity to swim away as fast as it's able, these two apex predators size each other up from a distance, preparing to establish who will reign as the supreme king of the sea. The Megalodon dominated the ocean sometime between 3 to 23 million years ago, spreading to all corners of the globe, within seas surrounding Europe, Africa, the Americas, and Australia. Its focus is mainly on offshore areas where prey would be prominent, hunting sea turtles, whales, seals, dolphins, and other sharks. Its range was long, traveling between coastal and oceanic waters throughout different stages of its life cycle. Given that the territory they cover grows with each year they live and the wide range of prey available to them, the megalodon's size can reach up to 67 feet in length. Armed with thick and robust teeth made for grabbing their prey and biting through bone, they have a 41,000 pound bite force, which is almost four times stronger than that of a T-Rex. Their tactics include ambushing their prey from below while ramming them into submission. With larger prey, They aim to disable them by biting at the fins, and once immobilized, biting through their chest. Their jaw is made up of around 276 frightening serrated edge teeth that are seven inches long and jagged at the sides. 
The Megalodon's competitor, the Leviathan, is armed with 22 large teeth of its own that come in various sizes, some up to 12 inches long. All are capable of piercing through its target. Excluding tusks in comparison, these are among the largest teeth that have ever existed on any known animal. Although it hasn't reached an overall equivalent size to the Megalodon, its length is equally impressive, as it's capable of growing as large as 57 feet long. Mainly living within the Southern Hemisphere, they've only been around for a short while, existing from 9 to 10 million years ago. Although it hunts similar prey to the Megalodon, it has a different strategic method of hunting, chasing its prey, tiring it out to the point of exhaustion, and then finishing it off by ramming it with its head and then biting it. It also has a more adaptive trait in its arsenal, its much larger brain. Being a warm-blooded mammal, it possesses superior intelligence, ensuring quicker thinking with the ability to change its tactics at crucial moments. The Megalodon acts on sheer instinct, and that has worked consistently for the past few million years. But will it work now? Although there are millions of years of difference between when these two behemoths existed and patrolled the seas, they shared a short period of time in history. But when they did overlap one another's territory, they created some of the most epic conflicts that have ever been had on Earth. This megalodon's turf has never been in contention until now. As the Leviathan approaches, observing the much larger megalodon, it's hesitant to make the first move, as generally, anything that it has come across before attempts to escape immediately, causing a chase to begin. The megalodon, however, never flees. The megalodon's instincts ensure it will act overconfident, and, as expected, it makes the first move. It swims at full speed, gliding through the water, aiming to ram the Leviathan. The Leviathan has no other choice but to do the same, rather than turning to flee and leaving itself unprotected. The two aquatic giants slice through the water on their way to meet fin to fin. The Megalodon is puzzled that its foe is not turning tail to swim away, but it continues, as it has no reason to doubt victory from this tried and true tactic that has never failed before. As the Megalodon approaches, it quickly turns to swim downward. It's faster and more agile than its opponent. It maneuvers below, gaining some distance. The Leviathan moves much slower and is unable to turn in time as the Megalodon veers upward and rams it on its soft underbelly, attempting to force it into submission. There is little effect due to its size, and the Leviathan continues to turn but it's far too slow as it attempts to bite with a desperate hope to grasp its attacker with its powerful jaws. The Megalodon easily swims away from its toothy trap, quickly retaliating by taking aim at the tail and fins, chipping away at little pieces as it bites, then quickly retreats, continuing this routine over and over, trying to disable the Leviathan's defenses. This tactic is effective, but it's taxing on the Megalodon as it's running out of energy. Still, it pushes hard to try and finish the hunt, using all the energy at its disposal, expecting that the struggle will not go on much longer. The Leviathan is outmatched, the speed of its combatant is far superior, and the constant chipping away at the fins and tail is becoming too costly. Upon realizing its abilities are surpassed and that it's helpless to resist the constant array of attacks, it attempts to swim away maneuvering as it flees, desperately trying to obtain some distance from its aggressor. The Megalodon follows the Leviathan during its attempted escape, realizing this is a prime opportunity to finish the job. The Leviathan swipes its large tail as it swims, trying to repel any further attacks from the Megalodon. It hits the Megalodon and stops it in its path with every advance. As the Leviathan continues to swim away, it sustains energy with ease. The Megalodon, on the other hand, is quickly running out. The Leviathan's strategy is working as it continues to swim at a relaxed pace. The Megalodon eventually runs out of energy, unable to continue at the same pace. But its instinctual arrogance won't let go. In its evolution, it has never really needed to develop the ability to flee. There has never been a reason for it. Over millions of years, it's never been outmatched. But that is all changing now. As they press on, it's clear that this is a contest between a marathon swimmer and a sprinter. 
The Leviathan continues to conserve its energy wisely, while the Megalodon, starved of energy, continues to pursue, becoming slower with every flick of its tail, to the point that it's unable to maintain the chase. Upon realizing its foe is exhausted, the Leviathan turns toward the Megalodon. Now with dominant speed and maneuverability, it spreads its massive jaws, grasping the Megalodon's spine, ending the struggle and ensuring its victory. The Challenger, the Leviathan, is a novice in comparison to the ancient Megalodon, but thanks to evolution, it ensured its eventual victory. This guaranteed its reign as the top predator, and arguably, the greatest predator to have existed on Earth. Unfortunately, it would only be a short reign. No, there wouldn't be a larger or more superior foe to take the mantle. The world would begin to change. The Earth would soon go through a cooling trend, which would cause the main prey of the Leviathan to go extinct. And without a food source to sustain this hulking beast, it was unable to continue. But this led to other similar predatory animals taking its place. The killer whale, sharing similar characteristics, eventually replaced its predecessor. The Megalodon would then retake the mantle by default due to the absence of its victor. Continuing with its prior successful strategy and broader food source, it ensured its prolonged survival. But as the seas cooled even further and became much shallower worldwide, it became more difficult for the Megalodon to reproduce. The suitable, shallow areas that were necessary for nurseries quickly disappeared. And without these, the Megalodon too eventually went extinct. And just like its former opponent, other, smaller sharks were able to adapt to these changes in the shallower waters, ensuring a more diverse pool of predators to dominate the seas. The giant shark that terrorized the oceans some 20 million years ago. For 13 million years, this 60-ton beast dominated the warm waters of our planet. Though, some believe that the Meg still lives in the most remote and deepest parts of the ocean. It's a hot summer day. It seems only logical to go for a swim in the sea. You're floating on your back, completely relaxed. Your eyes are closed. Your breath is even. Waters pleasantly cool around your body. A light breeze touches your face. You feel calm enough to doze off. Suddenly, something bumps into your leg. Yanked out of your half-slumber, you begin to flail until you're face-to-face -face with the invisible danger. Luckily, all you spot is a couple of easily recognizable fins and cute smiley snouts. Phew, just dolphins. Guess you're lucky to meet them in the wild. These amazing creatures are so close, you can touch them. You've heard people say dolphin's skin feels rubbery, but to your mind, it's more like the inner part of a hard-boiled egg. One of the animals is so close to you that its salty smell fills your nostrils. You know, though, that dolphins don't have sweat glands. It means they don't sweat and are pretty much odorless. The smell you sense comes from the water they swim in. The largest and most ferocious predator to ever haunt the oceans, the Megalodon shark dominated the seas for centuries before coming extinct millions of years ago. However, scientists managed to discover very few remnants of the giant shark. Everything we know about the great beast we've learned thanks to fossils of its giant teeth, which are just about the size of the average human hand. A megalodon skeleton has never been discovered. Shark skeletons are made mostly of cartilage, meaning that they decompose quickly. Luckily, sharks continuously shed and regrow teeth throughout their lives. One shark can go through 40,000 teeth in a single lifetime. Scientists have managed to study different types of shark species based on their teeth alone. The megalodon shark had around 276 teeth. When they fell out, those teeth landed in the seabed where they stayed for millions of years, fossilizing. Scientists found those teeth, and they're the only real record we have of the megalodon's existence. Megalodon teeth have been discovered all over the world. It means that unlike other marine animals of its time, the megalodon was intercontinental. Even today, most sharks and marine animals tend to stick to one sea or ocean. The megalodon shark swam freely around the world, moving between tropical and subtropical waters. Megalodon teeth have been found in every continent apart from the freezing cold waters of Antarctica. When a megalodon makes a starring appearance in a movie or TV show, it's portrayed to look like a giant version of a great white shark. Scientists previously believed that the megalodon and the great white shark both descended from one common ancestor, 
Still, it's not true. In fact, it's more likely that the Megalodon was the arch enemy of the great white shark's ancestor, the broad toothed Mako shark. That means Megalodon wouldn't have looked so similar to the great white after all. In reality, the Megalodon would have a shorter nose than the great white, along with longer pectoral fins to give the giant shark a stockier and more threatening build. They both had an excellent sense of smell though, so even in prehistoric times, it wasn't a good idea to go swimming with a chunk of raw meat in hand. And it certainly isn't safe now. Whether the Meg's hiding somewhere in the depths, which some still believe is true, or it's gone forever, younger cousins will still be there waiting. Also, both of them like to go after big marine mammals, so they would certainly have things to do together. That is, until the Meg got moody and accidentally ate its friend. Eh, you never know. These guys had a different hunting style. Great whites prefer to dive straight towards their prey and find its softest spot, like exposed legs or underbelly. Sometimes, an entire tooth would be found embedded in a bone of some bigger animal, such as a whale. Without the main parts they use for swimming, poor sea animals were then helpless and unable to escape. Yet whales were just a smaller part of Megalodon's diet. Seals, sea cows, squids, dolphins, other sharks… The good old Meg probably wouldn't say no to some random school of smaller fish swimming into its mouth either. Nothing better than a good snack after a big tasty dinner. Even those giant turtles weren't safe with their thick shells. The Meg probably took them as a dare challenge on a daily basis. Scientists have used computer simulations to try and work out the hunting style of the ancient shark. Using this technology, scientists have discovered that the Megalodon's attack style was very different from that of modern-day sharks. Modern sharks dive straight for their prey's most vulnerable spot, for example, the soft underbelly of a seal. The Megalodon's teeth were uniquely suited to biting through tougher areas of cartilage. So, evidence suggests that a Megalodon would first chew the tougher fins of their prey, rendering them unable to swim away before launching into their final attack. Some people believe that the Megalodon is still alive today, lurking at the depths of the ocean's waters. But it's unlikely to be true. Megalodons are a warm water species, which means they would be unable to survive in the cold waters of the deep ocean. Most of the Megalodon's potential prey live in shallower waters, meaning there would be very little for the Megalodon to eat at deep sea level. Simply put, if there was an animal as big as the Megalodon still living today, we would have spotted it by now. It is unlikely that you'll run into a Meg though. The sharks, like us, preferred warm coastal waters. Deep ocean living would be too cold for the beasts and food would be scarce. Their entire bodies would also have to evolve to avoid being squished by the enormous water pressure down there. It's unlikely they're still around, but not impossible. Some good news if you do run into one is that the shark is pretty unlikely to eat you. You are way too small a meal for the Megalodon, even if you have a couple of friends with you. This guy eats whales that are over 50 feet long. If you're having a beach party though, it's a different story. In a beach full of swimmers, the shark very well might creep up, scooping several humans into its giant mouth without even chewing. The fearsome name Megalodon comes from two Greek words, megas, meaning big, and odont, meaning tooth. Combined, they mean big tooth, and it certainly lives up to its name. Just one of its chompers is the same size as a human head. It had 276 humongous teeth in total, across five terrifying rows. In all of history, only a couple of saber-toothed cats and the T-Rex had consistently bigger teeth. Now that's a showdown I'd like to watch. The Megalodon vanished millions of years ago, leaving only huge teeth to be found by modern archaeologists. They literally disappeared with very few traces left. Scientists believe that over time, deep sea levels dropped and the ocean's temperature went down rapidly. Over a third of all marine life was wiped out as the oceans cooled and the number of animals at the bottom of the food chain plummeted. This had a catastrophic effect on the hungry predators at the top. Sorry guys. It became way too cold for these sun-loving sharks too, which made it difficult for them to reproduce since they gave birth in warm waters. The Megalodon is usually described as a sort of great white shark, but this is just a common myth. In fact, the ancestors of today's great white existed at the same time as the Meg, but they weren't best buddies and were even in competition with each other. The great white shark was a better hunter using its smaller size and agility 
to snap up the Meg's prey quickly. They were also known to eat Meg pups, who were only half their size. This didn't exactly help the whole extinction thing. While a Great White was no match for an adult Meg in a head-to-head -head fight, they sure weren't scared of stealing their food. This only left the bigger fish and whales for the Meg, but its food supplies began to run out as whales swam to the cooler new seas. The whales adapted to prefer the colder temperatures, leaving our friend the Meg behind. The Megalodons either starved or were frozen into extinction by the Ice Age. Rather than a great white, the Megalodon is more like a modern bull shark. It had a short snout, a flat lower jaw, and huge pectoral fins to support its massive weight and size. As scary as they are, these sharks were actually caring family guys. Several Megalodon nursery areas have been discovered in Florida, Maryland, and Panama. They gave birth to their young in shallow water environments. We know this from discovering loads of tiny Megalodon teeth found in these areas. I wonder if they had nannies too. Welcome to another fight of the century! The first participant enters the ring, it's the Megalodon! This shark lived 23 to 3 million years ago, and right now, it holds the title of the ultimate hunter of all times. The second fighter is in the ring, and it's the Dunkleosteus. It lived around 350 to 380 million years ago, and was the largest fish of that time. These creatures swam all over the world and aroused fear with their armored heads and mighty jaws. The Megalodon has the title of one of the best hunters ever. Scientists have been able to figure out the ancient shark's hunting tactics. They learned that these creatures somehow knew where their opponent's vulnerable spots were. They hit vital organs and were quick to disable their enemies. Sometimes, these ancient sharks would also aim at the fins of larger sea creatures to immobilize them. It left the bigger opponents defenseless and unprotected. Another tactic the Meg used was a battering ram approach. Ooh. The massive shark would crash into a whale, leaving it with no chance to escape. In other words, intellect and strategy were the Megalodon's most important skills. At that time, the Meg was the largest shark in the world. But in the oceans, there were creatures much larger than that, for example, whales. And the Meg didn't always have the courage to charge them. As for the Dunkleosteus, its trump card was its powerful jaws. Usually, the fish would swim toward a smaller animal. Then, in a split second, it would open its huge mouth, and the future meal would be pulled inside along with water. So long, Charlie! As the creature matured, its jaw shape changed. That's why, after being born, it could feed only on large soft fish. But as it aged, it got the ability to bite through tougher stuff. And later in life, the Dunkleosteus began to munch on sea creatures with hard shells, or basically any sea animal that existed at that time. Do you hear the sound of the gong? It means it's time for our sea monsters to meet face to face. They run into each other in the vast waters of the ocean. The Megalodon is the first to notice its opponent. The shark wants to use its battering ram approach against the Dunkleosteus' powerful armor, so it begins to speed up. But Dunn dodges and avoids the collision. As the Meg turns around, the Dunkleosteus gets a chance to grab the shark by the tail. In a split second, its powerful jaws close on the shark's fin. Ow! But the fish's bony plates are too short to bite through the Meg's thick skin. The Megalodon begins to twist and wag its powerful tail to throw the Dunkleosteus off its body. It looks like a rodeo! Dunn gets a powerful slap and is left stunned for a moment. The Megalodon uses its time to turn around. A couple of seconds later, the massive shark opens its huge jaw and ends the fight with one bite. Aww. So today, the Megalodon proves once again that it's worthy of its title as the best hunter of the sea world. The ancient shark continues its wanderings in search of a stronger opponent. Stay tuned! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fight of the century! In the left corner is the most famous dinosaur of all time, Tyrannosaurus rex. Let's call her Tyriana. <laughs> she existed about 70 million years ago and was a true queen in today's North American territory. In the right corner is the nightmare of the sea, Megalodon. This one's named Megan. This species went extinct about 3 million years ago, but legends about it are still alive. It's the largest shark that ever existed, and it was a super predator in its time. Even though our T-Rex is not the biggest of its kind, T. 
T. Rihanna still remains one of the most dangerous. But now, let's look at the size of her opponent. The size of the Megalodon is still a controversial thing. The fact is that the only remains of this ancient shark are teeth and vertebrae. So, scientists can only guess about the real size of this shark. But even by the most modest calculations, it's bigger than T-Rex. So in the size category, Megalodon left no chance for T-Rex. The first point goes to the giant shark. But what about maneuverability? Tyriana seems to be big and clumsy. However, T-Rex had excellent balance because of her massive tail and could turn and change direction very quickly. And look at her legs. Ooh, she clearly doesn't miss a leg day. Now, Megalodon was definitely the best predator in the aquatic world. Not only because of its size and mass, but also because of its intelligence. Scientists have found traces of Megalodon's teeth on the remains of whales. They concluded that Megan aimed at her prey's weakest spots and knew where the vital organs were located. Other remains of Megalodon's victims had many bone fractures. This suggests that she was not shy about using her weight as a ram. Such a 50-ton ram could easily break through concrete walls. <laughs> so, this shark had two main techniques, ram and ultimate bite. But the arsenal of T-Rex is much broader. Like a Megalodon, it had the strongest bite of its kind and also used a ram. Although its weight was not as big as Meg's, Tyriana could reach a much higher speed, and its impact was much more powerful than that of a shark. On top of that, she could strike with her tail, and her legs had a tremendous force and could hold the victim. No doubt, the T-Rex arsenal is much more diverse. So this point goes to the dinosaur. The pride of audience sympathies! T-Rex is undoubtedly the most famous dinosaur of all time. It's appeared in movies, TV series, cartoons, video games, my worst nightmares, and even postage stamps and memes. And its skeleton in the American Museum of Natural History is the most recognizable in the world. But there are also many myths about it. For example, the idea that it could only see moving objects. In a famous movie, the heroes escape from a T-Rex by just remaining frozen in place. Well, first of all, a dinosaur could easily smell them. <sighs> Secondly, the T-Rex had excellent vision. It was actually 13 times clearer than humans. Megalodon, on the other hand, had the reputation of a real devil. A scene where Megalodon destroys a fishing boat is still a cult favorite and frightening for viewers worldwide. But because there are so few remains left of it, we can only guess what it really looked like. So Instagram T-Rex would be much more popular. T-Rex takes this point. The gong sounds, and it means it's time to start the fight! These two predators meet on the coast of North America. Megalodon mostly lived in deep waters, but sometimes they hunted near beaches. T-Rex was also in this area, and now these two predators have come face to face. In shallow water, the Megalodon becomes even slower, and T-Rex easily evades its body. But it's difficult for her to attack the shark, because Tyriana's body does not allow to dive underwater. T-Rex decides to retreat to even shallower water. Megan the Megalodon drops, trying to bite the dinosaur, and just rams her with all of her 50-ton weight. The T-Rex loses her balance and falls down. Now nothing can help her. Ooh. So Megalodon proves again that she was the ultimate predator and could easily defeat the world's most famous dinosaur. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. One of the SCP Foundation bases is located somewhere at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. This top-secret place is ideal for securing, containing, and protecting humanity from weird, terrible, and very dangerous creatures and objects. Every morning, staff with high-level access check all the mysterious beings kept in cages. SCP-87 is a room with a dark staircase leading to pitch darkness. The object itself is a pale face without pupils and a nose. The object hasn't been studied yet and represents an average level of danger. 
Object SCP-337 is a mass of ordinary human hair weighing 130 pounds. It probably has intelligence, can move in any direction, and control each of its hairs. It attracts all the nearby strands of hair to increase its mass. It's unknown what size the object can reach with an unlimited supply of hair. Represents an average level of danger. Object SCP-432 is a small locker with a huge network of intricate tunnels and mazes inside. The object is safe, but unexplored. Object SCP-682 is a colossal reptile the size of a bus that can transform its body. It's practically invulnerable, can regenerate, resist any damage, and adapt to any danger. It has intelligence and doesn't like people. The object is extremely dangerous and still unexplored. Uh, stop. Wait a minute. Where is Object SCP-682? Its cell is empty. Oh no, it's escaped! Hit the alarm! The huge reptile that cannot be destroyed is lurking somewhere in the waters of the Atlantic Ocean. It's grown fins and gills to feel comfortable underwater. It's heading to the mainland for one purpose, to enjoy its freedom and scare people. 10 submarines and 20 cruisers begin patrolling the area using high-precision echolocation technologies. The reptile couldn't have gone far. A signal appears on one of the radars. Some huge object is floating toward the ship at great speed. But it's not SCP-682. It's something much bigger. Ah, oh, this is Meg, short for the Megalodon, a giant ancient shark. Usually, they were the size of a train car. But this shark is enormous, like a Boeing airliner. Ships and submarines have disturbed this ancient monster. It approaches one of the cruisers and breaks through the hull. The boat is sinking fast. At this moment, another dot appears on the radar. This is SCP-682. The reptile quickly swims to the shark. They look at each other for a few seconds. SCP-682 is much smaller than the Megalodon. But it has intelligence and the ability to regenerate and transform its body. The first reason for this, it's faster than the Megalodon. The shark swims quite slowly because of its gigantic size and weight. It lacks agility. The reptile can grow several fins and move four times more quickly than Meg. Another reason? Meg only has two eyes. It can't see anything with its back turned. SCP-682 can grow several additional eyes on any part of its body, if it wants to. Besides, the limbs of the Megalodon are its fins and a large tail. It only uses them for swimming. SCP-682 can have up to 10 limbs. These can be paws with claws or tentacles. It can grow arms with sharp spikes or bone ridges. It can attack or defend itself with them, take objects, or destroy something. But there's one thing that can help defeat the reptile. Jaws. The Megalodon has about 300 large sharp teeth. Each of them is the size of a human palm. But SCP-682 can grow a thousand small teeth, like those of a piranha or crocodile. The reptile can grow anything, but it can't increase its strength. The power of the Megalodon's jaw is much greater. It can easily bite through the ship's metal hull or firmly grasp SCP-682. The only problem is that the reptile can recover from any damage caused by the shark. Besides, it's too fast and can quickly escape the toothy mouth. The chances of success for the shark are minimal. SCP-682 has already calculated all the weaknesses of its enemy. And now, an epic show begins. Two monsters are swimming towards each other. The Megalodon opens its mouth to catch the beast, but the reptile deftly dodges it. The shark pushes the enemy with its giant tail. The force of the impact is equal to the force of a five-story building falling on the ground. SCP-682 flies off to the side and loses consciousness. But after a few moments, it opens its eyes. The creature recovers in three seconds. Razor-sharp crests now grow in its hands. SCP-682 can easily win with these limbs. It's swimming toward the shark. But at this moment, several strong nets fall on the reptile. This is help from people. The reptile cuts through the nets, while the giant shark opens its mouth and bites the crests off SCP-682. Then it catches the reptile in its jaws. Inside the shark's mouth, SCP-682 regenerates completely and tries to escape. Meg spits the enemy out. The reptile grows large bone maces on its hands. It's going to use them like hammers, but the thick skin of the fish provide good protection, 
so these upgraded arms are useless. The shark just doesn't feel anything. It twists and tries to catch SCP-682 in its jaws once more, but the reptile quickly swims away. SCP-682 realizes it won't defeat Meg in open combat, so it shrinks to the size of a small salmon. The shark loses sight of the enemy. At this point, SCP-682 swims inside the opponent's mouth and gets into its stomach. The shark starts to panic. It starts thrashing around and spinning. Something is happening inside its body. Then the Megalodon spits out SCP-682 and slowly sinks to the seabed. Meg is defeated. SCP-682 has won. It was obvious. People throw nets on SCP-682, but it cuts them into tiny threads. It climbs onto one of the ships and smashes the vessel. People run away and jump into the water. SCP-682 hits the deck of the ship. The monster wants to move onto the next boat, but notices several big fins in the water. A few dots appear on the radar. These are five megalodons. They're swimming here to avenge their friend. SCP-682 jumps back into the water. Sharks surround it from all sides. They take turns trying to catch it. The reptile manages to dodge the first, second, and third one. The fourth shark finally grabs it. SCP-682 covers itself with stone scales. The fifth Meg bites the reptile from the other side. But SCP-682 doesn't feel the bite. Its skin is strong enough to resist the shark's teeth. But still, it decides to change its strategy. The monster then makes itself tiny and flat to slip out of the megalodon's jaws. Then it grows a hard shell and hides inside it like a turtle. Sharks can't chew through the shield. They toss SCP-682 in different directions like a ball. Sharp thorns begin to grow out of the shell. They scratch sharks' noses. They can't do anything. Right at this moment, a round bath escape gets lowered into the water. It moves up to the hidden reptile and opens the door. The water gets inside along with the monster. SCP-682 can't go anywhere. It's inside a high-strength carbon steel chamber. It tries to break out, but it's pointless. Sharks are not satisfied with this. They want revenge. One of them bites through the cable of the bath escape. It sinks to the seabed and hits the reef. The sharks tear through the material, and SCP-682 manages to get out. The megalodons attack the reptile, but it uses its sharp spikes to scare them away. Then SCP-682 becomes furious. Sharks swim away from it. The monster has won again. At this moment, a powerful earthquake begins. The seabed cracks, and a giant tentacle climbs out of a huge crevice. It seems that SCP-682 has a new opponent, and this is a kraken. The reptile is about to defeat this monster, too. But this story is for another video. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. So you're swimming two miles down at the bottom of the ocean. Don't ask me how, just play along. It's cold and the pressure is intense. No fish in sight. Then you notice a green shiny thing. It's a cookie cutter shark. Its neck glows in the dark to attract fish and other delicious treats. The shark doesn't look like much. It's small, about the size of a cat. It has brown skin and large green eyes. But looks can be deceiving. Every night, this creature rises to the surface and goes after great white sharks, whales, even swordfish. If you look closely, you'll see a round mouth with a bunch of sharp teeth in it. They don't just bite, they work kind of like a saw. This one's called a cookie-cutter shark because when it sees something delicious, it takes a cookie-shaped bite out of it. These sharks have even been known to disable submarines. Wonder what flavor they are. Our next shark is about the length of a car. Only about a hundred of these sharks have ever been seen, but if you met one, you'd never forget it. It has a big mouth, a huge mouth, a mega mouth, like me! It's the Mega Mouth Shark. You could easily fit in it if you curled yourself up. They're not dangerous, though. Well, not to humans. They feed by swimming around with their mouths open, filtering out plankton and other underwater goodies. The shark has special organs in its mouth that glow, attracting little crustaceans. It swims deep in the ocean in total darkness. Probably has a great smile, though. 
Thresher sharks also have a huge body part, the tail. It's almost half the length of the shark itself, and it looks like a helicopter blade. It's one of the few animals that hunts using its tail. The shark sneaks up on a school of fish and starts to shake its moneymaker. This freaks out some of the fish, which is exactly the plan. In a pinch, it can also use its tail to defend itself. The best thing about this shark? It doesn't attack people. The angel shark. There are quite a few types of angel shark out there, but they're more shark than angel. They're flat like stingrays, and their skin is covered with patterns that help them blend in with the seafloor. Because of this disguise, divers sometimes accidentally touch them, which isn't the best idea. They're fast and have powerful jaws. Still, they prefer the taste of small fish to you. The horn shark has two ridges that look like horns right above its eyes. It's definitely the grandpa of the shark world. Not aggressive, swims pretty slowly, and is up late almost every night. Its two favorite meals, sea urchins and crustaceans. It moves its fin on the seafloor, almost as if it had paws. But don't underestimate this guy. It has one of the strongest bites of any shark. It needs those strong teeth to crush the shells of its late-night meals. And if something tries to attack it, watch out! Horn sharks have sharp spikes on their fins. The award for the ugliest shark goes to the goblin shark. And it's not even close. From the outside, it already looks kind of weird and is about the size of a pink underwater motorbike. It has a long tail and a seriously long nose. It lives way down in the depths of the ocean and loves to eat squid. It's not as fast as its relatives, but it's way more sneaky. It has a secret squid-catching technique which is totally wild. The shark swims behind the squid. It's catching up, getting closer and closer. But the squid isn't slowing down, no way! It looks like the poor goblin shark won't have any lunch today. Then it opens its mouth. Its jaw is attached to folds of skin that mean it can literally throw its jaw out of its mouth. And it's a shark, so those teeth are sharp. That extra reach helps it grab its lunch. And when the meal's over, it pops its jaw back in its mouth. These sharks have been seen many times off the coast of Japan. They're actually named after the goblins in Japanese myths and fairy tales. There's only one thing out there cooler than a ninja shark. It's the ninja lantern shark. Imagine there's a tube you can slide down that takes you to the bottom of the ocean. It's too dark, you can't see anything. Suddenly, a glowing dot, moving around in the distance. It's coming closer, shooting towards you. It's a blue glowing head. Worse, it looks like this head doesn't have a body attached to it. The ninja lantern shark has black skin, so it's almost invisible in the dark. It's only the size of a human arm, but its small, sharp teeth are no joke. No one really knows why this shark glows. Maybe to attract tasty fish? Another theory out there is that it uses this light to communicate with its friends. It has friends? The hammerhead shark. These ferocious sharks can weigh up to half a ton. They live in tropical waters all over the world, and they're one of the most recognizable sharks out there. Their eyes really are located on the sides of their hammerhead. This means they can see in almost all directions. They even have special neck muscles to lift their head up and down just to see that little bit better. Their favorite food? Stingrays. You know, those flat things that swim along the seafloor, camouflage to look like sand and bits of rock. Stingrays get by by blending in with their surroundings. Danger mostly just swims by. But the hammerhead's eyes see everything. Uh-oh. Great white sharks, hammerheads, and other large sharks live for about 25 years. But one shark can live much, much longer. The Greenland shark can live anywhere from 300 to 500 years. It lives mostly in the North Atlantic and Arctic oceans. It loves to swim deep down where it's dark, so it uses its nose to sniff out food. Since it spends so much time down there, it's figured out how to withstand the strong pressure. It's one of the oldest living, largest, and slowest fish on Earth. Just imagine, you're on an Arctic cruise and you see one of these sharks moving slowly through the freezing cold water. 
it might be 400 years older than you. Most sharks are omnivorous. They can go after dolphins, other sharks, crabs, sea urchins, smaller or even larger fish, hot dogs. Eh, kidding about the hot dogs. But the bonnethead shark is a bit different. It eats algae for about half its meals. It's actually related to the hammerhead shark, but its head looks more like a shovel. Can you dig it? If you see this guy swimming around, you might think it's a sea snake or a huge water worm. Frilled sharks like to swim way down at the bottom of the ocean, like a lot of sharks. When they're chasing something delicious, they move kind of like a snake. And just like a snake, they like to gulp down their lunch all in one piece. But that doesn't mean they don't have teeth. They have about 200 nice and sharp ones. The saw shark has a long, flat, and seriously spiky nose. Those teeth on its nose never stop growing. Each tooth is equipped with electric receptors to help the saw shark feel around for nearby fish, like a ship's radar. When dinner's nearby, the shark swims up and strikes with its nose, waving it around like a knight showing off his skills. Meanwhile, you won't have time to blink if this guy floats past. Did you see it? How about now? Meet the fastest shark in the world, the short fin mako shark. It can swim up to 35 miles per hour. That doesn't seem that quick on land, but underwater, that's fast. Slower than a cheetah, but faster than most dogs. It's warm-blooded, which is super rare for a shark. That helps it swim to cold and distant places where an ordinary shark simply wouldn't survive. The swordfish goes much faster. It can swim up to 60 miles per hour. It's not a shark, but it's still an amazing creature. In a race, the swordfish will usually come out on top. But it's not just fast, it's ingeniously fast. It has a gland next to its nose that pumps out a special oil. This oil spreads through its nose and comes out through tiny holes. This special oil is waterproof, which lets the swordfish glide through the water at high speed. The hammerhead has an incredible 360-degree vision that's called binocular. This creature's eyes are tilted forward, and their field of vision overlaps. The wobegong means shaggy beard in an Australian Aboriginal language. And just one look at this underwater inhabitant can explain the name choice. The viper dogfish knows how to create its own light in the deep ocean pitch-dark waters. The animal has needle-like teeth and extendable jaws. This allows it to feed on prey half its size. Now, at first sight, all these creatures have nothing in common whatsoever. But in reality, all of them are sharks. There are more than 500 shark species in the world, and lots of them don't look as if they're related. The most fearsome predators in the ocean, sharks have been around for more than 400 million years. They have adapted to all kinds of tough conditions. Now, some of them can live in freshwater, rivers, and lakes. These creatures vary in size, from as small as a human hand to 40-foot-long whale sharks. Now, most people would probably feel more comfortable without sharks lurking in the ocean depths. But few of them know that the disappearance of sharks would turn into a disaster for our planet. Imagine waking up in the world without these apex predators. If you're a surfer, you wouldn't have to scan the water for a shark's infamous triangular fin. If you're a regular beachgoer, you wouldn't have to be on your toes all the time, ready to sprint toward the shore once you hear a lifeguard's whistle. Movie makers would be confused. They'd have to set off in search of a new villain. But the truth is, sharks aren't as bad as they're pictured. Not all of them are large, torpedo-shaped creatures with sharp teeth. For example, the basking shark has small teeth, and it doesn't even use them for feeding. The horned shark's teeth are molar-like and help the animal to crush its hard-shelled prey. And how can a tiny 8-inch long deep-water dogfish harm you? Unlike what lots of people think, humans aren't sharks' favorite meal. Usually, we just get mistaken for similar-sized dolphins and seals. Most shark species prefer fish, squid, and clams. Hey, come to think of it, so do I. Mmm, calamari. Some are filter feeders. It means they get food by filtering seawater through their gills or mouth. Anyway, back to the world without sharks. Big shark species are at the top of the ocean food chain. They hunt smaller fish, for example, tuna. 
Those in turn eat even smaller sea inhabitants, mostly bottom-feeding species that live off algae. If sharks disappeared, it would totally mess up the entire food chain. Without sharks to control the fish population, the smallest algae eaters would soon be swallowed up by predators. No bottom feeders, and algae would grow wild. Along with bacteria, they would move to coral reefs. Corals wouldn't be able to photosynthesize. Sunlight they used to get nutrients from the water and carbon dioxide wouldn't reach them. Reefs would fade away, leaving behind skeletons that would later turn into limestone. It would lead to many marine species going extinct. Algae would also clog up fish gills and pollute water and seafood. Shark remains are an important food source for lots of marine inhabitants. For example, orcas, other sharks, and even octopuses. Without these remains, these species would be at risk of starvation. Or let's say tiger sharks. They live in seagrass meadows and prevent turtles from overgrazing the area. If sharks weren't on the lookout, all this underwater vegetation would be gone in no time. And that would create a huge problem. Scientists claim that 50 to 80 percent of Earth's oxygen is produced in the ocean by plankton. That's algae, drifting plants, and some kinds of bacteria. Normally, sharks feed on fish that gobble down ocean generating plankton. No sharks, and there might be a serious shortage of oxygen in the world. Little fish would thrive, but only at first. If there were no sharks, injured and sick fish, their most common prey, would unbalance the schools they live in. This would cause nothing but chaos. Plus, fish left without control would eat everything they see. Little shrimps, plankton, and other microorganisms. Soon, all of this would be gone, and fish would eventually starve. It would affect not only the world's ecosystem, but also the economy, like it happened once in North Carolina. Great white sharks were overfished there, and it allowed the ray population to grow. It resulted in hundreds of hungry rays eating all the bay scallops. The local fishery had to close. When there were no more scallops, rays moved on to other shelled sea creatures. The disappearance of sharks would also harm ecotourism. For example, in the Bahamas, just one reef shark brings about $250,000 over its lifetime. Divers pay this money to see the creature in its natural environment. One living whale shark brings Belize $2 million during its lifetime. Besides, if there were no sharks, we would never know how amazing these creatures are. <laughs> see for yourself. Sharks don't have bones. Their skeletons are made of cartilage, just like some parts of your ears and your nose tip. Cartilage is way lighter than real bones. Plus, sharks' liver are filled with oils. That's what helps them to be so buoyant. From afar, shark's skin may seem to be as smooth as that of dolphins. But in reality, it resembles sandpaper. It's made up of teeny teeth-like scales. They point toward the tail and reduce water friction when sharks swim. Even though sharks don't have bones, their bodies can't fossilize. As these predators age, they store calcium in their skeletons to make them stronger. That's why million-year-old shark jaws feel as heavy and solid as bones. Sharks have small black spots near their eyes, nose, and mouth. They allow these animals to sense electromagnetic fields and temperature changes in the ocean. Most shark species have an amazing night vision. Even cooler, they can see colors. They have special reflective tissue at the back of their eyes, which helps them see perfectly with little light. Now, you might be able to tell a shark's age by counting the rings on its vertebrae. Each vertebra has pairs of semi-transparent and non-transparent bands. If a vertebra has 10 band pairs, the shark is 10 years old. Such a count is not always correct, but still. The great white shark's bite is no joke. A 21-foot-long creature can produce a force of more than 4,000 pounds per one square inch. It means the fish's jaws are four times more powerful than those of a lion or tiger. And you, with your bite force of 150 to 200 pounds per square inch, aren't even in the running. Sharks can heat their eyes thanks to a special retina. It helps them to have a better resolution of everything they see around and detect their prey. Some bottom-dwelling shark species, for example nurse or angel sharks, have a special opening behind their eyes. It supplies oxygen directly to their brain and eyes. Sharks use this organ when they're resting at the seafloor or eating. 
But most shark species have to swim all the time to pump water over their gills. Sharks live in all oceans on the planet. But several species feel great in fresh water. Bull sharks, for example, can be found in tropical rivers. They've adapted and can now live in both fresh and salt water. And river sharks, true to their name, swim in the rivers of New Guinea, Australia, and South Asia. The number of teeth may vary from species to species, but most sharks have more than 15 rows of them in each jaw. One line after another, they go from the largest and most functional up front to the smaller and less powerful in the back. A shark can have as many as 35,000 cavity-resistant teeth in a lifetime. Now, you, as a human, can shift only your lower jaw. But a shark can move both its upper and lower jaws. It allows the creature to have a better grip while hunting. Sharks not only smell things exceptionally well, their hearing is excellent too. They can spot their prey from 3,000 feet away because they hear low-frequency sounds. The predators will easily recognize the sounds made by a fish's contracting muscle tissue. Sharks are slow-growing species, and they don't breed often. It makes them extremely vulnerable. People had better protect these creatures rather than fear them. Oh, and finally, when you go to the casino poker tables, be wary of one more species, the card shark. If you're not careful, he'll take